Joining us on the Tuesday edition of Journalist Hangout, I am Benga Oreshegun. Today on the program, Shehu of Boronu Palace, 40% of Meiduguri flooded as Alau Dam breaks. DSS releases Joe Ajero minutes before NLC deadline seizes as passport after 15 hour grilling. And later on the show, Aburo led Labour Party withdraws automatic ticket for Peter Obi and Governor Oti vows to defend its mandate as Obi and Oti write INEC for validation of recent stakeholders' meeting. I'll be hanging out with Babajide Koladi Oti Toju and Olabisi Digi for Italy. Journalist Hangout starts right now. Now let's begin the conversation. Residents of Meiduguri, the Borneo state capital, woke up to a disaster that has sacked many from their homes following the break and overflow of Alau Dam, which is about 10 kilometers away from the metropolis. The flood has so far submerged 40% of Meiduguri, including the palace of Shehu of Borneo, the Monday market, post office area, Guangwe, Moromoro Customs Bridge, Zoo, among others. Now, in a statement, the State Commissioner for Information and Internal Security, Professor Usman Tar, confirmed the development and urged residents leaving along the river bank to take immediate action to protect themselves and their property. Meanwhile, Vice President Kashim Shatima has expressed the sympathy of the federal government to victims of the flood disaster. Now, let's share this story with you. Jamaa kuruba gidaje yanda ruwa ya ci gidajen mutane wannan ruwan ma sabida ni dan mana dan iya kan bene na shiga wallahi in ba haka ba wannan abun ya bi karfin magana sai dai jamaa mu duga yin addu'a wannan ruwan ba wanda zai ce ga kaza ga kaza jamaa mu yi addu'a gwamnati da tana kokari a barkari na gagarella suna gudi hanyar ruwa aziya ma na gani ana gudi hanyar ruwa nan bayan kiriri Bayang chat does in Chankasa Managa with Grillo Lisuna Buriana. I want to use this all to commiserate for the people of our great nation over the court disasters we are reporting all across the land and breadth of this nation. After this meeting, with the consent of the president, I will watch to make you win. Your whole city has been overtaken by crops. It's not peculiar to one part of the country. We are facing this challenge right from by such a support. We rest assured that the president has the nation at heart and will do whatever it takes to salvage the state of appearance. A very sad one, very sad one. He was even in the water still talking about mm -hmm. the situation. Exactly. But, Biko, the last time this dam broke out was in 1994. And uh, submerging half of Meiduguri. Can yes. we really prepare for an event like this? Is it possible? Yes, we can. We can? We can. Tell me. Um, if the dam was bigger than that, okay. <laughs> it would have killed so many. It would have killed people in the communities along its path. What is usually done is so that the dam does not break. You'll be releasing water gradually. You'll be releasing the water gradually. Because if the dam breaks, it will destroy what's on this part. And we faced a few 
uh, incidents like that in the past, leading to loss of lives on a big scale. The Bakulori Dam incident comes to mind, you know, when I was growing up. Killed so many people, destroyed farmland, destroyed economic trees. The fury of the water. You can see they showed us a bit of that. Yes. Yeah, the water was gorging out. Mm. You know, after the dam broke. Now, um, there is this fear that another channel of the dam has already broke, uh, broken. And it's already, the water is already moving uh, towards some communities. So what we are seeing is a crisis that could be on a much bigger scale than we are talking about now. So we should always prepare for uh, this kind of um, emergency situation. We have to release the water gradually. You must never allow the dam to break because it's extremely dangerous when the dam breaks. This is a small, uh, it's a small dam. It's a small dam. I've seen uh, this dam before. It's a small dam. So the bigger dams if we must build, not break. If we build another dam, will this mitigate this kind of scenario? To an extent, it's to been us. suggested that, okay, that we should build more dams along the part of the problematic ones, like uh, the, um, the dam in uh, Cameroon, that mm -hmm. every year they release the water. Okay, the Lagdo dam. Yes, they release the water and it destroys farmlands mm -hmm. and all that. This is what we've had to live with for some time. So people believe that if we build more dams along this corridor, it can take in some of the water. But Nigeria has more than 250 dams already, largely underutilized. We are not using them for irrigation. We are not generating electricity, electricity with them. Mm -hmm. So we need to just stop this unmitigated pain on our people. Already the flooding issue is there. Mm -hmm. People are dying. In many northern communities, look at um, Yobe, for example, 18,000 households affected, 49,000 people displaced, and only five local governments. You can only access that matter through the state capital through five local governments. The other local governments are massively uh, affected. I saw videos from uh, Jakusko. That's the local government of my friend, the Commissioner for Information there. The place is completely flooded. The people's lives are being ruined because um, whatever they were expecting from their farmlands, yeah, exactly. just gone. gone. So we are going to have issues next year in terms of food security. Mm. People can't access farms because of these mindless bandits, and then we have this uh, flooding. The rains, the, the pattern of rainfall has been so unpredictable in northern Nigeria. For months, people were expecting the rains. People planted um, rice and other... Uh, yes. They, they, were, they got burnt because... Uh, they didn't see the, the rainfall was not forthcoming. Well, suddenly the rains have excess. come in their fury. I mean, it's um, I, I really pity our people. Okay. I really pity our people. All right, uh, let, me, let me come to you. They, they said some environmental analysts have said this is no longer rainstorms, but rain bombs. <laughs> now, is this a is this a combination of um, other things, or have we been taking nature for granted? I, I don't think this has anything to do with nature. Like he, re he rightly put it, I think it's about maintenance of the dam. You see, I see that here we find it convenient to hide under things like climate change and other natural disasters to excuse the failure of authorities in handling things the way they should have been handled. See, this water wouldn't have just come like that. It's long, it's, it's, we have Oyo Ogundam, for example. I live in the flood-prone area in this Lagos. And uh, once you open that Oyo okay, Dam, on your dam okay. you know, is in, within Ogun State mm -hmm. or something, um, the environment the, will be flooded. 
Okay. And uh, but you see, that thing happens. I've lived in my area now for the past uh, six, seven years, and uh, I've experienced flood four times in those six to seven years. Okay. What you see is that once it happens, there are noises and the rest. You see government officials coming around. They do photo ops and all of that, and they go back. And nothing, and is, nothing is done. They wait till another disaster occurs. Maybe people die, whatever. They sympathize. They say they are good, their words. And in fact, they will even tell you, leave uh, the leave, river banks. Leave, leave the area. The rains are coming. Just leave. Once they hear that, uh, it's, you know, it's such a, you, you just look at it that how much is it going to cost to do the right thing? Probably provide channelization uh, processes that will enable this water to link the lagoon and other places. I'm well, talking about, about Lagos now. Things I don't know what they spend that money on. But well, all I just noticed is that our government finds it convenient mm. to sympathize with people when disasters like this happen. And they will also tell you that it's climate change. It's happening in Dubai. Okay. You saw water in Dubai. But the question I ask is, these countries we talk about, do they wait and see this thing happen every year? Talking about being proactive. Yes, to their citizens. If it happens, it, it won't take them by accident the next time. They will have done something to mitigate another occurrence. So those are the things we lack here. Hmm. Pico, Burno State, lots of um, talk about farming, sweet potato, mm. rice, millet, and a lot of things. What is the impact of this food security-wise? I, I really fear what will come our way by next year because mm. we've had all kinds of problems. The uh, irregular pattern of rainfall means that we will definitely not experience um, bountiful harvest this year. Mm. But farmers are complaining already. Okay. Now, uh, to make matters worse, uh, worse farmlands are being washed away mm. by floods in the major food production belts of our country. That's the northwest, north central. You say these things are happening already. That of Benue, you always expect that every year they will have this problem. So, but it's a lot worse now. Northeast, northwest, I see a lot of flooding at an unprecedented level. And I'm really worried because these are the places where most of our food yes where well, they produce them rice um, beans the bulk of the beans we eat in lagos comes from borno state okay yes so uh, you can imagine if people can't harvest their crops or if they lose their farmlands what okay. will happen all right no? all right uh, 